under a bushel? Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel? Or under a bed? And not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Now, he's talking about a candle. Okay, some modern translations will say a lamp. Okay, but in essence, he's saying a light. If you get some light, are you going to put it under a bushel or hide it under your bed? No, no one does that. When you get a light, you, the purpose of the light is to light up the room, okay, so that the darkness flees. So that the, so when light comes, the purpose of light is to dispel darkness. Okay, now let's think about this. Let's connect the dots. Okay, line upon line and precept upon precept. Amen. Here a little, there a little. Hallelujah. Now, a candle. Now, you think about this. Any time that the Bible speaks of any kind of light, it's speaking about fire. Okay? Why is, how, well, how do I know that's true? Well, just, <laughs> just think about <laughs> the reality that uh, electricity was not harnessed until... Uh, what the 1700s, right? Uh, we, we didn't start developing um, the, you know, like the the electric light bulbs and so forth. Okay, um, but even if you if you get down to the real science of it, even the uh, what is producing the light that is shining upon my face right now is fire, because it's uh, because electricity is fire. It's harnessed. And it, and we've and we've got things that make it harmless, right? And we can turn it on and off at our convenience. But even even w what's producing the light inside of that light bulb on my ceiling and what's shining in my face behind this softbox is fire. And I, and I know that because I because I dropped <laughs> one of these uh, uh, CFL bulbs. In the garage when the when it's still plugged in and and it busted and there's a flame popped out of it, so I know it's still fire, but you know regardless of that, right? Any when the Bible is speaking about any kind of light, it's talking about natural light. Every source of light, every source of natural light, is fire, right? It is fire. Even the sun and the stars, it's like what is um, what does Timon and Pumbaa talk about on the you know when they're when they're looking up uh, in the uh, you know the starry night and he says what do you think those are he says, well they might be uh, you know burning balls of gas million millions of miles away and he says well to you everything's gas <laughs> yeah but it is the sun even the sun that lights up our day. Here on this earth is fire. The sun is fire. Every source of light is fire. Now, Isaiah tells us, uh, oh man, I, I now you're gonna have to watch Dr. Glenn's uh, uh, program on Friday for me to get into that. I'm not gonna spoil it too much, um, but I just want you to know that, friends. Every uh, every source. Well, I'll give you a little hint. Okay, I'll give you a little hint tonight. Isaiah 9 says that the people beheld a great, the people that walked in the land of darkness beheld a great light. They that dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, uh, upon them has light shined. Satan doesn't care if people see the light. Hey, Satan doesn't care if, if, if the light exposes things. Really. Because as long as, as long as that light is just far off in the distance, and it's just some star out there, you know, poking through. As long as it's, as long as they don't touch it, he doesn't care if you saw if if I saw the light. 
You sing that all day long. Doesn't mean nothing. Doesn't matter if you saw the light. Okay? What I'm telling you. You don't hear don't hear what I'm not saying. Hear what I'm saying. Okay? Satan doesn't care if you just see the light. What makes Satan nervous? What makes the darkness nervous? What, what needs to happen in order for you to be freed from the darkness is for you to come into contact with that light, for you to touch that light, okay? For that light to touch you, okay? Because what happens? What happens when people come into contact with fire? You're affected. You, you are undoubtedly affected when you come into contact with fire. He says, you're not going to, nobody brings a candle into their home. Okay. Now, yes, he's talking about, you know, setting it up on, to light up the room, to dispel the darkness. But what happens when someone touches that, that flame on that candle? They're affected. Okay. Now, what happens? Because our God is an all-consuming fire. He dwells in, uh, in unapproachable light. And yet he covers himself in darkness and he commands, and he, he, it's unapproachable light, and yet he commands you to draw near to him. What a, what a glorious and mysterious Savior and Lord we have. Hallelujah. He is, he is just so full of uh, esoteric conundrum. Amen. And yet he says, come, uh, true life, eternal life is to know God and Jesus Christ whom he sent. Don't. Hallelujah.